This video is brought to you by Hit Point Press and the Fable Makers Animated Tarot. This beautiful animated tarot deck will add some magical flair to your 5e games. Pre order at animatedtarot.com. Hello and welcome to the Gallant Goblin. Today we are taking a look at something special, a little different for us. We have the Pathfinder Character Chronicles from Beetle and Grimms. These are class reference guides and journals for your Pathfinder characters. They launched these via Kickstarter last year, and they're starting out with five of the core Pathfinder classes. Wizard, Rogue, Fighter, Cleric, and Druid. And many thanks to Beetle and Grimms for sending us some samples to show you. Basically, half of the book is a reference guide with a ton of class information pulled from the core rulebook and the advanced player's guide, and the other half is for you to complete for yourself with an expanded class-specific character sheet, a journal, a place to record your holdings, a map of your base of operations, blank grids to draw maps of other locations, a quest guide, stat blocks for your followers or animals companions or familiars, um, an absolute ton of stuff. Each book has the same basic ingredients in more or less the same order, but each class guide is unique in what it exactly includes and its design and just all the thoughtful little touches that are included. This is the story of your character in your campaign. Now my goal here is to spend this time to give you the information you need to decide if these books are right for you or for that person in your life that you might want to get a fan fantastic gift for. But half of the fun of these books is discovering those little details and all those specific little flavor things for yourself. So I'm not going to show you every single page. I'm not going to spoil every little special detail included. If you have any specific questions though, you can leave them for me in the doohickey below. Now, before we jump in, I wanted to remind you about our own little Pathfinder supplement, Queerfinder, which our friends at Beetle and Grimm's contributed to as well. Queerfinder is an in-world Galarian queer travel magazine featuring three tavern settings full of stories and characters, art, printable menus, adventures, usable maps, and magical items, plus stories to bring the setting to life titillating comics, real-world recipes, and so much more. It is more than 80 pages long, and if it does well, we're hoping to have more issues in the future and maybe bring it to D&D and Starfinder as well. You can check it out today at QueerFinder.org. Now, let's just start with the outside of the Character Chronicles books. First, you can get the standard books or the special editions. The only difference is the cover and the slip cover included with the special editions. The slip covers are very solid and feature original art commissioned by Beetle and Grimm's of the various Pathfinder iconic characters. The same artwork is on the front and the back of the slip covers. They're gorgeous and they definitely feel like some of the very best Paizo artwork. And if there's anything Paizo has down and they have a lot going for them, it's art. The book covers themselves are also different. Here you can see the standard editions, which are all different colors, made of vegan leather with embossed foil designs. The books feature lay flat binding and two types of paper, heavy paper for the character sheets and journals and glossy coated paper for the rules and artwork. And they include ribbon bookmarks. I don't have all the standard edition covers to show you, unfortunately, but here are pictures of the Druid cover and the Rogue cover. And here are the special edition covers. They're all black with debossed printing to give it more of an in-world feel. So as you run your fingers across the cover, you can feel where the designs and titles were pressed into the cover itself. So it's really just a matter of what style you like better. They all feel really solid and expensive in your hands. Though the special edition covers do seem to be a bit more robust as well, especially along the side binding, which you can see when we put the special edition next to the standard edition. The interiors of the books are identical though, with the exception of a limited edition numbered sticker on the inside front cover. Now, let's start with those inside covers which feature sketches of possible home bases for the characters. The fighter has a cool keep with stables and murder holes. The cleric has a nice church or a temple. The wizard has her tower. The druid has a multi-level treehouse. And the rogue has essentially a thieves guild hall with a front as a business. And before we talk about the details of the contents of the books, let me show you what's on the back inside 
inside cover. We have the same base of operations design, but we also have this pocket with a handy little elastic strap. In the pocket, we have a fantastic little dry erase board that's also unique to each character class. This is where you can keep and update all those pertinent details about your character that are likely to change pretty often, like your hit points, your AC, your wounded level, information about your shield, your attack bonuses, spell DCs, primary initiative bonus, perception, focus points, hero points, consumables, spells, and attacks, and more. You're not going to want to be constantly erasing on your main character sheet in the book, so this is where you can handle all that fun stuff. While the fronts of the boards are all unique, the backs are the same and include what you can do with your hero points, the basic specialty and skill actions, some of the most common conditions, and the death and dying rules. Now, the actual content of each book is divided into four parts. Your very expanded character sheet, the pertinent rules for your character class from the core rulebook and the advanced player's guide, your spell and equipment list, and a big old journal for you to complete with your character story. Each book begins with a custom birth certificate and ends with a certificate of death, which hopefully you will never have to complete. And each of these includes those little class details. For example, it asks if your rogue was raised by parents, scoundrels, miscreants, politicians, ne'er-do-wells, or do-wells. Very cute. After that, we have your expanded character sheet, which includes all those special skills and abilities and starting proficiencies for your particular class. You have an equipment list using the silhouette of the iconic, an extensive inventory list, and a class features guide which walks you through what you get at each level with a place to write in the various feats that you choose, as you get generally two feats per level. There's a place to record those feats and abilities and to record your archetype choices. Next, you have a place to record any followers you may have brought under your wing, and it refers you to the leadership system and the game mastery guide for those details. Then you have a quest log and a place to list leadership events that may have occurred in your organization using the leadership system. The next section gives you a place to record your organized play Pathfinder Society information, including your boons and keepsakes from successfully completing missions and a place to log your sessions. And hey, if you're not playing in the Pathfinder Society organized play system, it's still cool to log each session that you play with your regular group just to remember. You can also refer back to it later when and you want to show your GM that you haven't leveled up in like three months. Next is a place to record important NPC contacts that you've made and what services they can offer, and then a log for important locations. And finally, we get a few more pages to record those important quests. Now, each class does have some special pages in their book that aren't in the others. The Druid and the other casters have a place to record companions, forms, summons, and familiars. The casters obviously have a comprehensive spell log as well. And then there are just little details and art and color schemes to make each book feel unique. The expanded character sheet is about 35 to 40 pages in each book, give or take. They're not all the exact same length. All right, let's move on to the rules section, which takes the information you need for your class from the core rulebook and the advanced player's guide, combines it, and reformats it, so hopefully all the core information you need for your class is in one place. Let's look at the wizard, for example. Now, here's the wizard's information from the core rulebook, just to give you an idea of where this material came from. The basic information about the class isn't terribly long, and here's what was added to the wizard class from the advanced player's guide. Just the these two pages in the Advanced Player's Guide. It's just a new arcane thesis and some more feats, aside from the spells which we'll come to later in this little video. Now, here he is in the Pathfinder Character Chronicle book from Beetle and Grimm's. The first couple of pages more or less contain the same basic content about the wizard, but as you can see, it's formatted a bit differently with different art. But when we look at the arcane theses, which sounds kind of dirty now that I say it out loud, you'll notice that the staff nexus is included in the Beetle and Grimm's book because that's what the Advanced Player's guide added. The new wizard feats from the advanced player's guide are also folded into the regular core rulebook class feats. Beetle and Grimm's also added a sidebar about spell casting with a staff, which they pulled from much later in the core rulebook in the crafting equipment section. That's the kind of subtle touch that makes these books great. It's something that you may not have even noticed as it wasn't as easily accessible in the original core rulebook.
And that's how all the book's rule sections start out. You get the basics from the core rulebook with the advanced player's guide options added in seamlessly, sometimes with extra sidebars and other little things. The books diverge a bit from there. The Druid book gets a section on their focus order spells. The Cleric gets a section on the various religions and gods so they can customize their character based on their deity. And a table outlining all the domains and then a section on their own focus domain spells. Here's where they all come back together to give you a very useful section about skills. But these sections, again, aren't identical. Each one focuses on the skills that are most likely to be of use by a character of your class. But they do give you tables with the page numbers in either the character chronicle or the core rulebook where you can find all the info you may need on all the general and skill actions. For example, the cleric has easy access in this book to information about deciphering writing, identifying magic, learning a spell, and recalling knowledge. And for skill actions, they focus on acrobatics, deception, diplomacy, intimidation, medicine, and religion. But for the fighter, you get information about earning an income, recalling knowledge, and subsisting. Then skill action information about athletics, crafting, intimidation, medicine, and survival, and then a list of focus spells. So you're not going to get all the general information in each class book, but if everyone at the table has a character chronicle, you may find yourself turning to your friends rather than going to your core rulebook or the archives of Nethys each time you need to remember the difference between treat disease, treat poison, treat wounds, and administer first aid. Then each book gives you about eight different selected archetypes that might be of interest to someone of that class. An archetype is essentially a collection of feats that help you further customize your character on top of your class, ancestry, and heritage. So for example, the Druid has information about the Beast Master, Familiar Master, and Herbalist archetypes, among others. While the Rogue book gives you archetype information about being an acrobat, a duelist, or a shadow dancer. Now there are dozens and dozens of archetypes available to you in second edition. You can see them all at the Archives of Nethys website, but it's cool to see a couple of the options available to you and to have the general archetype rules at your fingertips. The rest of this section is different depending on the class. The wizard and druid get information on familiars, the casters get spell casting information, the druid gets information on familiars and animal companions, but it may be the rogue and the fighter that get the most fun additions. First though, they both get information about general and skill feats, with some selected feats listed that may be of interest to them, and they get general gameplay information about the modes of play and hit points and death and dying, conditions, actions and combat and moving, all very helpful stuff. But while the druid, wizard, and cleric get a ton of pages dedicated to the spells they can select, a whole section of the book really listing out all the spells in the core rulebook and those added in the advanced player's guide, the rogue and the fighter have room for some other fun stuff since they likely won't be slinging that many spells. The rogue gets this incredible, like, full restaurant menu with some in-game items like poisons and helpful items from the regular rule books, but also real-world recipes like we did for Queerfinder and descriptions of entrees and wines and desserts and cocktails and things like that that I'm pretty sure were just written by the folks at Beetle and Grimm's. I don't want to spoil these for you, so I'll let you discover some of them for yourself or most of them for yourself, but the Rogue Book also has some great pages giving you sample rogue builds like the Mastermind, the Eldritch Trickster, and the Ruffian with NPC mentors, with build guides and leveling guides. It's not like a complete build guide like you might get online, but each one gets two pages showing you how to build a character. It is pretty great. And the fighter gets this whole magazine catalog with equipment options, weapons, and armor, and shields, including special items that were in the advanced player's guide, all laid out like you're shopping in a catalog. It is extensive, full of the rules you need to know about each item and the category of item, and full of fun additions like reviews and endorsements. And again, I don't want to spoil everything, but I think you'll find it equal parts useful and hysterical. Each book does have little tabs, well, not real tabs, but tab-looking designs on the side of the right-hand pages, helping to guide you through the four main parts of the book. The Fighter book replaces the Spell tab with the Equipment tab on all but one page, funnily enough, but it looks like the Rogue book still labels its Equipment section as Spells. It's a little oversight that will hopefully get corrected in future printings. Each book gets somewhere between 130 and 150 pages, give or take, of rules information. And finally, each book contains 
contains a journal with lined pages, class-specific art and quotes, and some gridded pages to draw maps. There should be plenty of space to tell the story of your character. Each book ends with a three-panel, fold-out, gridded blank map where you can draw your base of operations and a place where you can sketch your character. Or, like in my case, try to find a friend or a professional artist you can commission to draw your character competently. Each book ends up being between 229 and 235 pages long. Now, as you may know, Pathfinder content never stops. Every rulebook, lore book, and adventure path includes more character options and ancestries and spells and rituals, you name it. There is no way to make a complete class character chronicle until second edition is over, and I don't think we'll see that happen for like another 10 years or so. But you can certainly copy over that information from those other sources like the spells and the archetypes, what have you, to this book. So I don't consider that a fault of these books. Now, I'm more of a game master than a player, so if there are subtle details or rules options missing from these books that would be useful, I might not have noticed them. The only thing I noticed that I would like to have is a table of contents, particularly for the middle section of the rule section of the book. Now, the last page does give you a place to create your own personal index, but a table of contents page at the beginning of part two would have been nice, just like to say, like, where is that section on skill feats that I need to find? But other than that, these are fantastic. They are full of fantastic art that I think is taken from across the Pathfinder line. I guess I wish there had been enough room in the cleric Wizard and Druid books to have as much personality and humor that the fighter and rogue books got in their equipment section, but there's still plenty of personality in each book. The only other wish is that we could have gotten class books for the other core classes, the alchemist, barbarian, bard, champion, monk, ranger, and sorcerer, not to mention the ones added later, the magus, oracle, investigator, summoner, swashbuckler, witch, gunslinger, and inventor, for now. I can only hope that if these books sell well for Beetle and Grimm's that we'll be able to see those other class books somewhere down the line. And as for prices, each regular edition book is 40 bucks plus tax and shipping, which isn't bad at all. The limited edition books are 75 bucks plus tax and shipping. And as far as I can tell, they're all still available at BeetleandGrims.com as of this recording. But if you want anything you see here, I would go pick them up today because with small companies, you never know if they're going to be able to do a second printing if they sell out. Let me know what you think about them in the comment section down below. What class would you like to see get a character chronicle next? I wanted Bard. I can't believe we didn't get Bard. And be sure you're subscribed here to the Gallant Goblin. Pretty soon we'll have reviews of several Beetle and Grimm's products, including the Gold Edition of Absalom City of Lost Omens, the Legendary Edition of Curse of Straw, the box set of Tal'Dorei Reborn, and the Platinum Edition of Wild Beyond the Witchlight. We recently made a full review of the Silver Edition of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft that you can see in the eye in the corner of your screen right now. I have my work cut out for me in the best way possible. Let me know which of those Beetle and Grimm's products you are most excited about. Now let me tell you about something new from Hit Point Press. The Fable Makers animated tarot deck brings the magic of tarot to your 5e games. Combine the new deck with the Fable Makers tarot guidebook to enhance your games in many unexpected ways. The guidebook will teach you all about using tarot in your real life, but also how to use these gorgeous cards to inspire your RPG creativity from creating NPC backstories on the fly to enhancing your PC's motivations and history and more. The deck comes with 78 fully animated cards with eight frames of lenticular looping animation each, and the illustrated guidebook is 280 pages long to help you get the most out of your new deck, whether you're using it for personal readings or to spark your creativity in your RPGs, or both. Pre-order the Tarot Guidebook, Deck, or Box Set today and get a free PDF of the Fable Makers Tarot Deck and Guidebook with your order. Shape your story at AnimatedTarot.com. And thank you for watching today. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel helps us out a lot. Like I said earlier, we have a lot of Beetle and Grimm's and Pathfinder content to show you soon. To be sure you're one of the first ones to see it, click that little bell icon down there to be notified when we drop new videos. You can find our Queer Finder supplement at QueerFinder.org and you can sign up to be notified when we launch our Cobalt Plushy Kickstarter at CobaltPlush.com. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For now, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.